Now you might be saying um, everything we said so far that's that's fine if you've got if you're in a church where the sermons are engaging and they're faithful to the Bible and it's all brilliant. But for lots and lots of people, um, that's not the case. That's just not their reality. And um, it's true. A lot of congregations have to sit under some really um, naff preaching and sometimes some really bad theology. Um, so what if, what if the sermon is awful? What do we do then? Well, in the book that we're basing this off, uh, Listen Up by Christopher Ash, he splits uh, these kind of bad sermons into three categories. And so we're going to take those three categories and just see what our response should be one by one. First, number one, the sermon, unfortunately, might just be really, really boring. Second, number two, the sermon uh, might be engaging and interesting and the preacher might be a charismatic person. Um, but the sermon itself might be biblically lacking. Not wrong, but leaves you thinking, eh. And finally, of course, number three, the sermon might be outright heretical. Really, really bad. Let's be honest, uh, some preachers are so boring that paint watches them dry. Um, maybe it's the style of the presentation is a bit wooden. Maybe... It's that the preacher just has a really boring voice. Um, or whatever it is, to be honest, that makes you find it boring that morning. If the only problem with the sermon is that it's boring, then I'm afraid the responsibility to sit up and listen is still on you. The preacher isn't going to suddenly get more lively, but if the sermon is faithful, then we need to be searching our hearts and asking God to help us to listen and to take away his truth from that morning. And why not encourage the preacher? Watch out for signs of life and point them out when they're there and say, thank you, well done. You can bet that they'll be getting enough criticism as it is. So why not be the person that spurs them on and offers them a helping hand? But what if the preacher's sermon is faithful and uh, engaging and they're moving their hands around a lot and they're hooking you in, but you can't see where this sermon comes from the passage? Um, the more you listen, the more you're thinking, where on earth did the preacher get this from? I just can't see what the preacher's saying in the Bible in front of me. Maybe the preacher is avoiding stuff that's quite obviously in the passage because that stuff would be difficult to talk about. Or maybe the preacher is, is importing stuff in that the passage doesn't say. So what you're getting is a sermon on some other part of the Bible uh, because the preacher hasn't prepared what's actually in front of them. Now the first thing to do here is to watch out that you don't become one of those people who's always turning up looking to criticise. There were people, weren't there, who always turned up to hear Jesus, but they only turned up to criticise him and try and catch him out. Uh, and we want to really be careful that we don't become one of those people who are turning up on a Sunday morning to catch the preacher out because we expect the preacher to make mistakes and get things wrong. Our preachers are only human. And if we're coming to uh, the sermon with a critical spirit, ready to find something wrong with it, then it's actually time for us to repent. So if your preacher is preaching engaging sermons that, that you can't see how they come from the passage, just go and speak to the preacher. Any uh, wise um, minister will be happy to be spoken to, uh, to be corrected, to be challenged, to be asked, where did you get that from in the passage? Uh, and even if your preacher won't accept correction, then you can always pray that God will help you take away um, his truth from what you've heard that morning. But finally, uh, there's a third kind of sermon, isn't there? We've had boring um, and we've had, I can't see where this comes from the passage. And in both those cases, the answer is still to sit and listen. But there's a third option. The sermon may be heretical, meaning um, it's got nothing to do with the Bible. In fact, it might actually be against what the Bible clearly teaches. But what is heresy then? Well, first of all, heresy is something um, to do with the central truths of the faith. So 
Heresy is not just something that you happen to dislike or disagree with. It is um, someone saying something like, Christ is not raised from the dead, or uh, God is not Trinity, or taking something that the Bible says is sin, uh, let's say adultery, uh, and saying, no, actually, that's good. We should celebrate that. We should bless that. That's heresy. The second thing um, about heresy is that it's persistent. It will not be corrected. So we all make mistakes, don't we, to a, a greater or lesser extent. Hopefully your ministers aren't making mistakes about whether Jesus <laughs> is God or not, um, or raised. Uh, but if someone is open to correction, then that's different from someone saying, no, I'm right. I don't care that this isn't what the Bible says. I'm going ahead with it. And thirdly, heresy is taught publicly. We all have lots of private opinions about lots of different things, and they may cross the bounds of what Scripture says, and we may be mistaken, and, you know, but when someone gets up in the pulpit and teaches these things in public to the church family, that is serious. That is heresy. So if you're under a minister who is teaching things like Jesus was never raised from the dead, Jesus isn't God, um, the things the Bible called sin are actually good and worthy of being celebrated, you've got no obligation to stay under their ministry. In fact, you should go and find a church where the Bible is taught and where Jesus is loved and obeyed. And that's the end of our series. Oh, very sad. Um, I hope it's been useful for you. I hope that now that all the videos are together on YouTube, um, that if you wanted to, you could go back through them and kind of recap some of the stuff we've talked about. I hope they're helpful as we start to all come back into church together and, and do what we've been talking about, um, listen to God's word together and pray about it and seek to obey it together. Um, I'm just going to leave you with uh, a few prayer points if you want to take them away. Uh, and then um, I'll see you next time, whenever that is. So thanks for watching. Um, here's some things that you can be praying for off the back of this.